suppression of the use of marijuana and of the forces lurking behind it are the most important jobs this department is now engaged in. In 1930, the records on marijuana in the Washington office of the Narcotics Division scarcely filled a small folder like this. Today, they fill cabinets. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Coloradians, and everyone that's smart enough to listen from the outside. It's one of the most amazing plants we've ever discovered. The pot party, the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a cup. Please! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to part two of the week, Stolen Appetit, with your host, as always. That was a in- weird intro. I'm Kip, and to my left, I got CB over on the casting couch. How you feeling, CB? I'm alive. We're here. Oh, boy. So nobody, we have not teased this at all. I have been fucking wonderful at keeping this upright. Shout out to me. I'm like the Benjamin Albright of our our group chat. Um, have not mentioned at all what has happened all week. But there was a reason Chris was not on the Tuesday episode and we aired our guest uh, earlier. And we're going to dive into all of that. But before we do, we got to give a shout out to our sponsors, Chris. Let's hear it. Yes, sir. The low-hanging fruit of the day. Everyone's going to listen to this podcast ad read. It's for our friends over at Akimbo. We are currently doing a giveaway on behalf of our sponsors because we want to share the love maybe for those that were just casually not ready to go get their med card or maybe they were trying to save money for other purposes right after the holidays and things of that nature. Well, fret not. We've teamed up with them and our friends over at Bodega Denver, one of my favorite breakfast restaurants in town, um, to do a giveaway to met, share the love. We're going to give a shopping spree to Standing Akimbo. We're going to pay for you to go get your med card as well. And then after you go shopping, you're also going to get a $50 gift card courtesy of our friends over at Bodega. They wouldn't let me pay for it, Chris, because they're so fucking sweet. So we've actually upped the ante, and you're going to get $100 to Bodega because we're not going to not support small business. We're matching. We're matching, Chris. I love it's, when you could say that. I know, right? It's like when we do the onesies during Christmas time when we run down the stairs. It's just like that. And what better way to match than great munchies with great weed? And that's exactly what Standing Akimbo has over at 3801 Jason Street. But check out our social media page. We've got a a giveaway going until the first Sunday of February, which I believe is going to be February 4th or 5th, at which time we will announce the winner. But go follow the rules there. And if you already have your med card and you're not shopping at Standing Akimbo, just ring the the, the little bell above your your seat, and Tommy will come back there and hit you with a... Oh, sorry, I got off on Tommy Boy tangent, but yeah, check out Standing in the. All right, you're guys. a moron. Yeah, I didn't want. I, <laughs> I got a panic there. I didn't know exactly how to proceed. Um, yes, yeah, so we got a loaded episode. We're, we'll finish with Last of Us recap, but let's start with the weekend that was. Yes, let's start with you. You went. Uh, you traveled home to to check on mom. Yeah, I did. So mom is okay. Um, her house is starting demolition. And so her and the neighbors, they have like a split townhouse kind of thingy. And both of them caught fire. I did not realize her neighbor, I think his name's Paul. I can't remember if that's right or not. But either way, um, they both had to obviously move out. And so they're going to demo that. And I just, again, can't tell y'all how appreciative we are as a family for the community and we try to express that she tried to but she started crying so i cut that post short but just um it's all going well jackson's kind of a fickle scene cannabis is now legal in mississippi which is an interesting dynamic um but the food was really fucking good went to a classic so when you go home, do you go to like a staple first or you're like, let's go try some shit? Is there like that one spot you've got to scratch the itch right when you get off the plane? Uh, yeah, it's always a, there's a staple. There's not many new spots that pop up in Dothan. I mean, shocking. Um, Dothan's not the central, Dothan's not the lively urban hood that, uh, Jackson is. So, um, not too many new spots to go to. So we just automatically go to hunts. Either night one, usually night night two, just because night one you're just getting in. No, totally get that. We literally got off the plane and went to this little restaurant that's called Kiefer's. It's like a Mediterranean casual spot, and it's semi to that. 
casual Mediterranean spot, you and your sister get in Astoria, and Jason talked on the podcast about it Tuesday because he used to li- he lived in the same neighborhood, and he was like, oh, it's fucking immaculate. And yeah. Chris and I have talked about it, so I hate that you missed that convo, but we'll dive into that reason why. But it's just like this no frills, everything comes out in wax paper, good, every, you know, plastic yeah. cups, and man, it just it hits like. You know, not 2003, and it was fucking good. But there's a new restaurant in Jackson. I want to give a shout out to Chef Hunter Evans. Um, he was nominated for a James Beard for the South region or Southeast, whatever it is exactly for that. Uh, his restaurant, LV's in Jackson, it's in this little new pop up. And, you know, Hunter and I grew up together, and he went off to the Culinary Institute, but decided to come back to Mississippi and plant his flag and be like, I'm going to be an ambassador for, you know, the food in this community and how we go about cooking and things of that nature. And it similarly reminds me of like Alex Eaton, who's also in Jackson, but very rarely seen in the smaller communities like you were talking about. But it's fucking a vibe. And so I did try some new stuff, but I darted directly to the fast casual $10 year lunch special. Yeah. I fucked up some Gulf shrimp and some oysters. You Chicken. brought back some boudin? I uh, have it shipping to us. My dad has overnighted product from us because I did not want to check a bag and wait on Southwest coming out of Jackson, Mississippi. Wise I just, move. I just didn't. There was nothing about me wanting to relinquish any <laughs> bit of control of anything to Southwest, much left, much less really dank-ass boudin, crawfish boudin, Chris. Holy Buck. Um, so my dad's gonna over or send it to us, but so we'll have a little cookout. Maybe make a little kolaches with them. <sighs> there's this little. Uh, there's the food is good down there. The the relationships between people on the other side of the aisles and the other side of the interstates is terrible. The infrastructure is garbage, but the food is delightful. And with weed coming in, maybe the a little bit of money or coin jingle in the pocket of the communities that opted for having cannabis will kind of ease the tensions in the community as well. But it seems to be kind of casually rotting. But at the same time, there's also parts of it that are casually thriving and new spots popping up in the outside. So I actually had a really good time um, hanging out with family and eating places that had not been in Jackson before. So I got really excited about it. While some parts are decrepit, like the roads to get to the badass restaurants, these new restaurants and these young chefs being in the town kind of gives you hope that the younger community is trying to build it back up. So I'm really fired up for that. At least, you know, Chef Hunter and Chef Alex and the other folks that are, you know, trying to put their best foot forward in Jackson's as well. And then Mama Bear, she's going to rebuild. She's staying with my sister. Um, And I think... I think she'll probably stay there. My sister's like a traveling nurse, and I'm not going to dive too deep into that, but maybe moving again in the summertime so maybe she could rent through my mom. My mom could rent to my sister or whatever. Yeah, how, yeah, how yeah, that yeah. would work. I think that's maybe the goal for the time being, but I don't know if that's the long term. So she'll have to reevaluate, but uh, she may come spend a little time with us, Chris. Come be on the pod. Nice. You say that now, but in 23 years, you'll be like, holy shit, that's a lot of Sandy. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Nah, she's a sweetheart, and she's brutally thankful. Um, She was like, can I please take you out to lunch, or let me help in some... I just... She's just so sweet, and so... You know, things are on the up and up, and I think that burden that was probably wearing on her chest is a little bit relieved, and that's because of the community. And so I think that's a perfect segue into my next question is, how was your weekend, Chris? Weekend, best skiing of my life. So what did you do? Where did you go? Tell us, Give us some yeah, fucking yeah, details. Yeah. So uh, Thursday, well, we were originally supposed to go stay at our boys' cabin in Tavernash uh, this weekend. But uh, with these incoming snow to Steamboat, we audibled and drove to Steamboat Thursday night, which, let me tell you, that drive got a little hairy. I mean, thank God I couldn't see, but like 10 feet ahead of me, so I couldn't see what I was driving up. It's um, kind of like you can't be scared of the things you don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, made it through there, and um, there was a fuck ton of snow. So y'all just skied for like four days. Y'all went, you went up Thursday and then yeah, you came back. Thursday night and then we came back Monday. Okay. Yeah. And the snow was incredible. It was just snowing nonstop, feet of snow. 
It was it was great. What was the shoveling out process? Because you went semi-viral for at least our page, living in a shadow band. You had, I mean, so somebody left your fucking note. Did you get him some that, alcohol? The tricky thing with that is sometimes I guess maps will send you to this one house location, and it has, it's like treats it as the same address, and so it almost happened to our buddies the night before, and when me and a buddy were coming back the next day. You know, we had only been in there at night, so we couldn't tell, like, you know, you can't really see when there's that much fucking snow up there. Like, there's no landmarks. It's all white, and there's just, you know, walls of snow. And so we pulled into this one area, and we thought we were going down our driveway, and it turned out to be the wrong driveway, so the car got stuck. Um, so we just had... <laughs> So we just had to leave the car there overnight. After Did you we had, knock on the neighbor's door? Or say no, anything? so the, it was it was at a house that was being built. <laughs> so, so the house was definitely under some remodels, so nobody was currently occupying the house. So, anyways, we left it there, and that started up a whole shitstorm of like, oh, how the fuck are we going to get this out? And everybody was being really like up in arms about it. And I was like, guys, like we aren't going to figure this out tonight. And then tomorrow, the next day when we were headed to the mountains, people were like, start calling people. Get on this. It was like 7 in the morning. Like, nobody's going to do shit about it. Have you ever heard of AAA? That was a sticky situation. We called AAA, but they couldn't do anything about it because the roads weren't plowed. Uh, they were like, we can't help you. Well, Not a whole lot of help from AAA, I got to say. Well, let's hold our brakes on, uh, you know. Emergency roadside assistance. I got a little help at DIA, but it was nothing. Yeah. Um, okay, so you left your car there overnight the next morning. We went and skied, and then I was thinking, like, ah, oh, fuck, I got to deal with this now. So we were on our way home, and when we were on the way back, I was like, let's just pull down to that driveway and just see if we can. I'll walk down there and see if it's been plowed. And it had been plowed. And I walked down there, and the owner was down there, and they were working on their house. And he's like, hey. <laughs> and I was like, who? Hey, um, he, he actually turned out to be the nicest individual on the planet. He's like, I take it you're staying up at that house up the road. And I was like, yeah, he's like, I left a note. I was like, oh, I haven't been there yet. And he's like, yeah, I figured it was somebody who was staying there. This, this has happened before. Um, so, so he was a good sport about it. Did you get him a bottle of booze like you requested? No, cause I called him back afterwards. Like once I got home and got the thing and just was thanking him and all that stuff. And then I was like, when I go into town tomorrow, I'll pick you up a bottle. But I go, I don't think I should bring it down your driveway. I mean, I was like, you can come up to the house and get it any time. And he's like, man, I was just fucking with you. Like, this is a good story to tell. Uh, just, pa you know, pay it forward. Well, that's nice of him. Yeah, so he ended up having to pull me out of the driveway, though. So he did it with his own car? or His truck. This is a steamboat guy. Yeah. If you live in steamboat. You should have got. You should have gone and just slid down there, walk down there and drop that bottle off. But it's okay. You know, like he said, pay it forward. Yeah. So the rest of the weekend went off with a smashing success? Oh, it was great until we departed. Oh, what happened then, Chris? So we were coming back down Rabbit Ears Pass um, and uh, kind of towards the tail end, we were about like maybe 20 miles from Kremlin uh, around this curve. Buddy hit a pad of patch of ice and uh we went fish telling and then rolled kind of flipped into a ditch i can't believe y'all are all right yeah it's pretty incredible like uh it all happened so fast but there were three of us in the car um basically we just flipped over into a ditch and landed upright on the wheels um side so airbags landed, came out oh so it landed upright yeah well, that's kind like, of mad about like, like that. And for those that can't see, he's shifting his hand at like <laughs> like a 45 like degree tilted, angle. Yeah. yeah. So you were kind of down in the ravine, yeah. but you had, you kind of barrel rolled over the incoming yeah, I lane think we and caught landed. a little bit of air, like hit and then flipped. And then uh, a barbed wire fence might have stopped, kept y'all upright. Yeah. 
And so if you had had the barbed wire fence not been there, would you have kept rolling or was that kind of like into like a flat? We were land? going into like the bottom of the ditch. Okay. So like you, I don't think we would have gone much further. Okay. And so everybody was okay. Um, so I think a lot of folks have seen things like this on I-70 things but have not actually been a part. And obviously there's that – moral hangover life like cars passing or like you're mortified or whatever the saying may be but luckily you know it's more of like thank god we're fine yeah what are the next steps if somebody is like going over a pass and they have a car accident where they go off the side of the road or something of that nature to where their car is immobile for the time being what are the proper steps that at least y'all took or was it smooth how how did what goes on after the fact so y'all get out you clean out your britches i mean we uh, once we checked to make sure everybody was okay, we called nine one one, and then state patrol came out there. Okay, so state patrol comes out there fairly quickly. How does how long that did y'all have a sig- about, cell signal? Was it a bitch trying to find nine one one? Like no, we we luckily had a signal because we were down at the bottom of the pass, about to be in Kremlin. Okay, so y'all were on the opposite side of yeah. Steamboat's vibe. Yeah. So y'all were on that downside. Yeah. Called an edge, flipped. Did a possible barrel roll. I mean, this sounds almost like, you know, Mario Kart when you're going around those yeah. corners, but all is okay. Come out unscathed with some side airbags deployed. Cops show up. They give you all a breathalyzer. Was any, was everybody safe no, the and cop, sober? Yeah, everybody, everybody was safe and sober. We, this was at like eight in the morning. We weren't. Oh, okay, Chris, let's throw fucking stones in a glass <laughs> house, dickhead. I mean, well, anyways, I know tons of people that are drinking at 8 a.m. Yeah, okay. true. Shout out to my f- crew at Lakeside. Yeah, so, and then, um, yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't necessarily like super fast, but I'd say, uh, cop got there in like 20 to 30 minutes. And then, you know, they alerted a tow truck. Um, and I mean, it took a while just because it's a nasty weekend up there. Yeah, you're probably not the first car they either pulled out or, you know, that first, you know, accident that occurred that weekend. Yeah. So if you're stuck in Kremlin, like what happens if obviously the airbags went off so the cop won't let you drive? Everyone's sober, a little bit shooken up. How did you get down the mountain or what happens? Do they take you to the police station? Well, the police officer drove back <laughs> one of our friends and we rode with the uh, tow dr- truck, Scooby-Doo yeah. Scow. Hell Three yeah. of us. Excuse it was great. Style. <laughs> and so, yeah, they took us into town, Kremlin. We were like, hey, where can we go to get something to eat? So we went to this Great West restaurant. How was the food? Uh, I actually enjoyed the burrito. Did I, somebody pick up your tab? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Had a burrito and a beer, and it was delightful. <laughs> And then a friend of ours came and picked y'all up. Yes. And everybody got down the hill yes. unscathed relatively. All right. So how does the what what goes on when you get back from that? You obviously do you get on the app? What kind of insurance? Progressive? Flow? I ride with Flow. Nice. Um, so you call Flow, or yes. do you shoot? Do you do this online and then they give you a shout? No, like I how just, does this I work? I called them. Okay. I called them and told them that you know that we were in an accident. Um, I was not driving and then my adjuster called me this morning. So fairly smooth and painless in that regard. Yeah. So all in all, really, you look, I mean, you look like you got, uh, you know, a mashed bag of assholes, but (laughs) that's got nothing to do with the car accident or my voice. Yeah. Um, no, uh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, so far it seems really promising just as far as my agent seems to be handling things. But we all know how that can turn south real quick. Well, see, I don't. So um, we will keep up with your the lineage because you've had some terrible luck since you paid off this Subaru. But when I walked in the house, you immediately said, oh, I'm team Subaru for life because obviously it kept you all upright, safe, and you came home fairly unscathed. Yeah. The mountain skiing was great. Oh, the mountain skiing was great. Nice. I mean, if I mean, the, I'm sure some of our listeners were up there this weekend. I saw pictures of somebody that posted it, and it looked like they had dug out a fucking like 
northern Colorado, uh, California. You know, it looked like McConkie stuff. Like, it was piled high, like above head. So I can only imagine y'all were just tearing it up and yeah. had a big time. I wish Steamboat was easier to get to, but then it wouldn't be as cool as it is. Yeah, then it would end up like Vale or yeah. Breckenridge. Where but it's just God over. damn, it's a cool town. It is such a cool town. <laughs> that one in like Crested Butte and obviously places like Durango and Telluride that are f- truly removed from the Front Range. Man, they're just so cool. You know, like the ones a little bit off the beaten path or like you don't see the interstate like blatantly in your face everywhere you are. And then you still have a reasonably priced bar, restaurant or two. But you can always get, you know, sushi on the mountain like those other nice places. So Steamboat really is one of the great last ski towns. But on that note, I am now in the market for a car. So um, if anyone has any like good dealership, people you know who to talk to where to go if you work at a dealership and you're listening to this we will give you free ad reads for a whole year if you hook my man chris up with a car not necessarily free you know i'm sure insurance is going to come into play you know i'm just saying if y'all want to we'll give you free advertising for a year if you give chris a good discount you can shoot us a message on social media or you can email chris at Stone Appetit, whatever it is. Um, but yes, we are 100% entertaining <laughs> offers from companies that have all wheel drive and side airbags because my man Chris has terrible luck with cars. Ugh. But you're a Subaru guy, but first. I mean, it, it I just... mean, you were a forerunner before that, and before that, you were um, the Scooter Gang. Scooter gang. Scooter gang. <laughs> Thank God, God you weren't on a scooter trying to come down Rabbit Ears Pass. You look like Lloyd and Harry. I probably wouldn't have turned it, though. <laughs> and if you had, you just like land. And like I a clearly would have had two pairs of gloves on. <laughs> well, yeah, you wouldn't have been cold out there waiting on the cops. Um, yeah, so holler at Chris or us um, if you uh, run or work at a dealership and happen to be in marketing as well. Okay, so I got a little bit of I got us in a little bit of trouble while you were on the side of the road jerking off truckers. What happened was I accidentally posted some spoilers from Last of Us episode three, and so I want to apologize for that for everybody that was listening and watching or whatever, and maybe had not caught the episode when I posted that. So now it's Thursday night. So turn this off right now and resume eight minutes later because we're about to talk about Last of Us. Chris, this episode made me cry just open tears. I was like a fucking faucet. My nose was running. Morgan was like, are you okay? I was like, I don't know. It was just so emotionally charged. And I can't tell you after my sour puss week last week with the Cowboys kind of pissing all over my Sunday parade, a little bit of hung, hungover from partying this one just totally redeemed me like what an episode and so we watched the after after every episode there's like this four minute little saga where they'll talk with the actors that were you know highlighted in the episode as well as the director and the guys and so it's um it's a reenactment of a video game and they're doing apparently according to video gamers shout out to our gaming crew um, definitely not us. So we have no frame of reference. So when we say it's things like it's Walking Dead like, it's because we have a cinema or television preference over video games. But apparently they're knocking that out of the park fairly well very early. But this episode was just conjured up as just a side tangent to tell a story that maybe had been left untold and a way for them to differentiate a show from just you know, going through a single player, you know, whatever role playing game, Chris, I, it was awesome. And it has Ron Swanson in this episode. Well, you can't like, you can't spoil it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to spoil it. It was just a great episode. And it was a tangent about two role players in the game, which were also just role players in the show. And it just tells you their side story. So it tells you like what happened for the, from when the outbreak and it kind of leads them through their story and how it coexists with our main stars. So it's not like it's going to ruin anything, but it was unbelievable. I'll, I'll catch up. I'll, it's I'll, a great, topic. I'll get on it. It's and HBO then, three yeah. episodes in each one's like 49 minutes or whatever, 58 minutes, whatever. I'll get into it this weekend. And then it's not like you're driving to the mountains this weekend. No. So you have some time and then we can, uh, discuss, 
Yeah, because episode four comes out right before we record on Sunday. So that's perfect. So you'll have, I mean, you'll be enthralled. As soon as you watch the first one, you're like, well, we might as well watch the second one. So, like, don't, like, block off your schedule for two, three hours or make sure you don't have an early morning meeting because you'll knock them out real quick, but you're not going to want to stop after one. It's like a Lay's potato chip. It's really good. Gotcha. All right. So do you have anything cool going on this week that we need to let the folks know about? We're going to Kachina Bella. I'll drive tomorrow. Um, for those that are listening, you can see it on our page this week. Um, and then Billy Strings is here this weekend. For those that are looking for a good time, Thursday, Friday, Saturday at First Bank Center, that's going to be gnarly as shit. Also, they just announced Little Wayne will be at the Fillmore. I'm going to give them over under 42 minutes of actual stage time. What do you think? Oh, yeah, definitely definitely under 45. Okay, yeah. So if I remember anything from our three, us promoting Fillmore shows, I think 3-6 Mafia was very short. Um, so I'm basing it off of that as my, that was my last, uh, hip hop concert. Those tickets go on sale tomorrow morning, AKA Friday morning, February 2nd. So that should cover just about this week's episodes. We had a great episode on Tuesday that dropped with Jason Diminich, co-founder of Biome, the Queen City's biennial art cultivation and community. And it's a really gnarly interview and he's a, a New York native that moved west a couple years ago and has found himself at home working in the arts community here. So if you're if that tickles your fancy, go check out Tuesday's episode. Anything else, Chris? You want to give anybody a stern warning about driving on the roads of the mountain or anything else cool? Just be safe, and if you feel uncomfortable, get off. Get off the road. Oh, nice save there. Nice save there. Yeah. Um, well, until next week, we want to say stay high, stay hungry. Drive safe. <laughs>